Thank you for your purchase. This is an instructional video for the elderly appearing, advanced auscultation, Jerry Mannequin, or the young appearing, Carrie Mannequin. What you see on the table are all of the components that compromise the most advanced version of the Jerry or Carrie Mannequin line. The Jerry, the elderly appearing Jerry, or young appearing Carrie, come partially assembled. The first bit of setup is to attach Jerry's legs. By aligning the keyholes in the hip and on the leg, you slide the mannequin leg in with the foot pointing towards the head. Misalign the keyhole and bring the leg down. The most advanced version of the elderly appearing Jerry or young appearing Carrie comes with four arms. The left blood pressure arm and a left articulating arm and a right intravenous arm and right fully articulating arm. For the purposes of this instructional video, we're going to attach the intravenous arm and the blood pressure arm. Gently roll the mannequin, exposing the keyhole on the side of the upper torso. Align the keyhole on the arm with the keyhole on the upper torso. Slide the arm into place and misalign the keyholes. Both the intravenous arm and the blood pressure arm as well as the articulating arms attach to the mannequin in the same manner. All versions of the elderly appearing Jerry or young appearing carry have several visual inspection features. A constricted and dilated eye, a reddened skin fold under the, under the breast, and on the back, a cancerous and non-cancerous mole, as well as a stage one decubitus ulcer. All versions of the elderly appearing Jerry or young appearing Carrie have several injection sites on the articulating arms at the shoulder as well as on the intravenous arm at the shoulder on the upper thigh and a hip injection site on the lower torso. All versions of the elderly appearing Jerry or young appearing Carrie come with additional features. The wig when initially applied is very loose fitting. 
to adjust the wig, simply use the tabs and the hooks inside the, inside the wig to give the wig a tighter fit when applying it to the mannequin. This will help prevent it from sliding or moving during any additional procedures you might be performing. The mannequin is also equipped with a set of dentures, an upper and a lower of which we've already placed. To insert the dentures, simply slide them in and fit them up into the top of the mouth, similar to a real denture would be applied. The mannequin is also equipped with a simulated hearing aid for the right ear only. To insert the hearing aid, simply place it into the ear canal and fit it for a snug fit. Versions of the Jerry elderly appearing or carry young appearing mannequin from complete to advanced on up have the ability to have a feeding tube placed through either nostril which is open or through his mouth. To access the stomach, gently twist the head all the way until he's facing down and pull the head free from the upper torso. There's one stomach bag attached to the three tubes that give you access to the fluid reservoir. Additional features about Jerry or Carrie's head. Both ears can be irrigated using water. Simply drain the ear by tilting his head until the water runs out. Either ear can be accessed for ear irrigation. He also has, he or she also has a permanent tracheostomy site. Water can be added to complete and advanced on up versions. Approximately 20 cc's can be added into the tracheostomy site for washing and suctioning practice. The tube on the inside of the mannequin is permanently fixed and any materials added into the mannequin have to be suctioned out. All versions of the Jerry and or Carrie mannequin can have eye drops or water or washing around the eye. The eye will, come, will remove to remove any excess fluid from behind the eyepiece. Several versions of the elderly appearing Jerry or young appearing Carrie mannequin come with a life form blood pressure arm. To set the arm up, first locate the electronics box, install batteries by sliding the battery compartment free from the electronics box. Install batteries according to the very lightly imprinted plus or minus signs on the inside of the battery compartment. Ensure the batteries are all seated firmly in the battery compartment. Slide the cover back into place. 
There are several ports on the top of the electronic control unit, a port labeled for cuff, a port labeled for arm, and a port labeled for external audio amplifier. Take the cord from the shoulder of the mannequin and attach it in the port labeled arm. Take the cord from the blood pressure cuff, twist it into place in the port labeled cuff. An optional speaker is available for classroom settings. Use the speaker cord and connect it into the port labeled for external audio amp. Pressing the power button will turn the electronic control unit on. A home screen will come up and the display will show the last blood pressure that was completed. When the unit is brand new, the last blood pressure that should be entered into the electronic control unit is a blood pressure of 120 over 80 with a heart rate of 80. When the unit is turned on and it's at the home screen, the palpatory pulse in the radial section of the arm will initiate. Lightly pressing in the radial section of the arm, you'll feel the heart rate set at 80. To select a different blood pressure, simply press the menu button. The first menu that comes up is the set systolic. Using the arrow keys, you can increase or decrease the systolic rate. Pressing the menu a second time brings you to the diastolic menu. Again, using the arrow keys, set the diastolic rate up or down. Pressing the menu button a third time will give you the heart rate setting. Again, using the arrow keys, select the heart rate you choose to, to select. Selecting the menu button a fourth time becomes the set palpation. The pulse can either be on And if you hit the down arrow button, it will go to pulse less. This will automatically set the systolic and diastolic pressures both to zero. Selecting the menu button for a fifth time will bring you back to the home screen on the electronics control box. A second button on the electronic control unit is the oscillatory gap button. Hitting the gap button will allow the oscillatory gap feature to be on as indicated by a yes or disabled as indicated on the home screen by a no. To perform a blood pressure, Simply apply the blood pressure cuff to the hinged arm with the cuff applied and your blood pressure settings complete, simply squeeze 
Fill the air in the blood pressure cuff past 200. Slowly allow the air to release and listen for the five Kirotokov sounds. For the purposes of this instructional video, we're using the external, optional external audio. Procuring a stethoscope and listening for the sounds within the arm is pertinent when using a stethoscope to listen for the blood pressure. The arm has an internal speaker as well when using a stethoscope. When at the home screen, using selecting the arrow buttons will adjust the volume of the speaker within the arm from one to seven. A couple of versions of the elderly appearing Jerry or young appearing Carrie have auscultation features available. The first part is to set up your auscultation equipment. Your auscultation equipment comes with a smart scope and a remote. To begin setup, install batteries. It is important to install the batteries in the remote first. Slide the back cover off the back of the remote. Using the diagram in the battery compartment, insert the two AAA batteries included with the mannequin according to the diagram. Slide the battery compartment back in place. Next, install the batteries in the smart scope. Remove the cover. Install the two AA batteries included with the simulator according to the diagram in the battery compartment. Ensuring the batteries are firmly seated in the battery compartment is important for both the smart scope and the remote. If using earpieces, attach the earpieces by twisting the earpiece onto the top of the smart scope. Also included are teaching earpieces that attach to the smart scope in the same way. Once the batteries are in place and you determine the method for hearing the sounds, earpiece, or you can use an optional speaker system available. To use the optional speaker system, which we will do for this instructional video, you can detach the earpiece if desired, and then using a standard speaker cord, Insert the speaker cord into the top of the smart scope. The remote has several functions available. First and foremost is the power button, is the red button on the top of the remote. Pressing the power button, a home screen will come up. The heart sound and the lung sound is detailed by saying HS for heart sound, LS for lung sound. 
The heart sound and lung sounds that come up are usually O1, which is the normal lung sound, all detailed at the bottom of the remote, and O1 for the normal heart sound. To change between the 16 different available lung sounds and 12 different heart sounds, you select the button for the sound you wish to change, the heart button. You can then use the scroll button to scroll through the 12 different lung heart sounds, or you can use the numbers on the keypad to select the number in which you desire to have. Hitting enter after finding your selection will then take you back to the home screen and the selected heart sound will come up for the number that you chose. Pressing the lung button, you will then get the, the lung functions in the screen. Again, you can use the scroll button to scroll through the different lung sounds, or you can use the numbers on the, on the remote and select the lung sound you wish to select. Pressing enter again, will allow your selection to be displayed on the home screen. Once you've determined which heart and lung sound you wish to, you wish to hear, you can then pick up the smart scope and place it in, on the appropriate spaces on the mannequin. Included with the mannequin are helpful graphs that will allow you to determine where the sensors in the mannequin are for the pertinent heart sites and anterior and posterior lung sites. On the complete and advanced versions of the elderly appearing Jerry mannequin or young appearing Carrie mannequin, there's a phalanged hole on the lower torso. This simulates a gastrostomy site. There are also two ostomy sites on the lower torso as well. To access the fluid reservoirs for the gastrostomy and both ostomy sites, the genitalia must be removed. The gastrostomy site has a larger fluid reservoir bag with a pinched coupler at the top. To remove it, lightly pinch the coupler and pull down. To replace it, slide it back up into place, ensuring that the fluid reservoir bag 
is laying flat in the base of the simulator. To remove the, get, the ostomy sites, simply pull down and there's a very small fluid reservoir bag. On the larger ostomy and the smaller. When replacing all of the fluid reservoir bags, ensure they're flush and tight onto the simulator before adding any fluids. The elderly appearing Jerry or young appearing Carrie come with set of genitalia for female and male genitalia. The female genitalia comes intact when the mannequin is shipped. To remove the genitalia, slightly pull away from the lower torso, sliding the genitalia from the genital tract on the inside of the mannequin. There's a fluid reservoir bag that attaches to the lower tube on the female genitalia that will allow for enema practice. Adhered via hook and loop to the genital tract is a fluid reservoir bag that simulates the bladder. On the outside of the bladder is the bladder pressure sleeve. Fluid can be added to the bladder reservoir bag and reattached to the back of the female genitalia and then the pressure sleeve can be added for an easier catheterization procedure. pressure sleeve and the bladder reservoir can also be used on the male genitalia, attaching in the same method. The male genitalia also comes with a simulated prostate for a digital rectal prostate exam. The male genitalia, the bladder reservoir, and the pressure sleeve all fit into the mannequin in the same method as the female genitalia. Catheterization procedures can also be performed in the uncircumcised male genitalia. The bladder reservoir can be filled by using the large 140 milliliter syringe and tubing. Pull back to introduce water and gently insert in through the urethra until you feel a pop and it enters into the bladder reservoir bag. You can then force the fluid into the bladder reservoir bag, removing the tubing when complete. A similar method can be performed on the male genitalia as well. Advanced versions of the elderly appearing Jerry or young appearing Carrie come with an intravenous arm. Several supplies are included 
for use with the intravenous arm. To initiate use of the intravenous arm, it is important to procure a fluid supply stand. This one can be purchased separately. In addition to getting 500 milliliters of distilled water to use with the simulated life form blood. You can start by mixing the blood. Puncture a hole in the safety seal and add the 500 milliliters of fluid to the included pint bottle. Replace the cap. Ensure it's tight and shake to mix. You can set the blood aside. Two 500 milliliter fluid supply bags are included. Attach one of the 500 milliliter fluid supply bags to one of the free tubes extending from the shoulder of the simulator. Applying a light amount of lubricant or water will help fit the fitting into the tubing. Ensuring the latex tubing is up over the lip of the fitting is important to prevent any leaking that occurs from the shoulder tubing. This bag can be the hanging bag from the fluid supply stand. Connect the second fluid supply bag to the free tubing coming from the shoulder of the simulator in the same method. Ensure the cap on the second fluid supply bag is tightly sealed. Close the pinch clamp on the second fluid supply bag. Close the pinch clamp on the hanging fluid supply bag. Open the cap and add the simulated blood into the fluid supply bag up to 500 milliliters. Simulated blood is messy. It can stain fabrics and certain skins on mannequins. Use caution when using simulated blood. Hang the filled fluid supply bag no greater than 18 inches from the surface of the arm. To charge the arm, simply open the pinch clamp on the hanging fluid supply bag and open the pinch clamp on the second fluid supply bag. Simulated blood will then run through the vein system, which makes a loop down the back of the arm, around the back of the hand, and back up through the arm.
the arm is fully charged when you stop seeing evidence of fluid or air bubbles running through the fluid system. The arm does turn at the bicep to allow for access to the vein system underneath. This also might assist in forcing any additional air left in the veining system out of the arm. When you're ready to perform a blood withdrawal or other IV practice, simply close the pinch clamp on the bottom fluid supply bag. The arm is now ready to begin intravenous practice. To infiltrate an IV into the fluid supply, into the arm, a small adapter is included to use with needles and other IV products to connect to an additional fluid supply bag. A realistic flashback will occur when performing blood draws in the IV arm. The venous channel can be accessed all up through the entire arm. The skin and veins are easily replaced. This concludes the instructional video for the life form elderly appearing Jerry Mannequin or young appearing Carrie Mannequin. For additional information, contact us by calling 1-800-558-9595 or emailing lifeform at enasco.com. Additional information can also be derived from our website at www.enasco.com backslash healthcare.